The United Kingdom has slammed restrictions on student visa routes in a bid to reduce the influx of people into the country. This policy restricts students from Nigeria and other countries from bringing family members on all but postgraduate research routes. Before the restriction, the British government allowed sponsored study visa holders, also known as student visa holders, to bring their partners and children, that's their dependents, into the country. Statistics showed that the number of Nigerians granted sponsored study visas increased by over 60,000 in 2022 alone. Many international student hopefuls and British universities are worried by this new immigration rule. Well, joining us in the studio to talk more on this is a UK-based solicitor and immigration lawyer, Ulufemi Aina. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on yes. TVC Breakfast. Uh, good morning. Thank I, you. I wonder how you interpret uh, this uh, decision by the government of the United Kingdom, because there's been divergent reaction to it. And some mm. persons are even saying that uh, the government is doing the right thing for them because of uh, the number of persons. When you look at the NHS and mm. all of those benefits, mm. Mm. Uh, it has been stretched at this point that perhaps that is why the government is taking this decision. But let's get your point of view. Well, first of all, the first point is this. All of us have a responsibility to ensure that there is no immigration abuse. Mm. Because if we don't, one day you are going to be a victim. And that day, that might be the day you want to your mom to come to the UK, or you want one of your relatives to come to the UK for medical treatment, right. and they are going to be refused, not because of anything, just because there's an abuse going on. Mm -hmm. And this student, you see, government has a responsibility to cut net migration. That's what they are saying. And the Home Secretary, under the immigration law, is under a duty to come up with policies and guidance that we ensure effective immigration control. Now, the net immigration they are talking about, what is this net immigration? Net immigration is, you look at the number of illegal immigrants, sorry, immigrants mm -hmm. coming into the country. Then you minus it against immigrants. That is those who are living in the, the country. country. So you need to balance the equation. Because the difficulty is this. You have a responsibility to the indigenous population to make sure you manage net immigration mm. so that there is no influx, influx of immigrants into your country. And if you don't manage net immigration, the next thing you are going to put up with is what is called shame migration. And that is not good because it can lead to all sorts of problems. Mm. And how does shame migration come in? Now, look at this student route. You come in mostly. The people who are applying, they are the wife of the husband, husband. that they are going yes. for a master degree. Mm. Now, they give them, a, the wife, if he's a, as a student, they bring the husband in, that's two of them, but they already have about three children already, making five. The five of them enter the United Kingdom. They set you down just for the sake of argument. Mm -hmm. Now, what is going, where the shared migration will come in? After spending six months, it is possible the wife get pregnant. Mm. It is possible they have a baby. Then child care in the United Kingdom is not an easy thing. Yeah. Then the next thing that will happen, the wife will say, let me bring my mom in. The mother will come in. As soon as she enters the country, the husband will say, let me bring my mother mm -hmm. in as well. You can see the so shame. Now, alone. after a while, the mother we now say, you know, your sister is in Nigeria. She hasn't even got a job. Why don't you invite her to come in? Then the sister will come in. After a while, the brother will come in. So the net migration now turned to shame migration, whereby in the long run, you may have about 10 members of that family in United Kingdom. And I must say this to you. You see, this decision by the Home Secretary, Though it's being criticized, maybe people are saying, well, this is because Nigerians are abusing it or whatever. Number one, under the Equality Act, you cannot discriminate on the grounds of nationality and target certain people mm. because they are from certain area. And you can see from your intro that and other, you use the word uh, and other countries. countries. Yes. But having said that, from 2019 to today, 
the number has gone up that we have about 750 percent mm. and that is a matter of concern mm. and the question we need to ask ourselves is this i know people have been critical and saying this and that the, it begs the question how many of those people migrating are genius today in the real sense of it mm. let's let's be realistic and I'll tell you, for you to travel to United Kingdom as a student, you need to show you have sufficient funds. funds yeah. And that fund is about 18,000 to 22,000 pounds. Mm. That is a substantial amount of money. Bet me and you, how many people can afford that with what is going on in the country now? Mm. And where the abuse comes in, I'll tell you, mm. is that you realize that some are just using a proof of fund. Mm. The fund which they don't even have uh -huh. because some people in the bank are helping them to boost their account. And now they use that account, they get the visa, but they don't even have the money for the school fees. And when they get to the UK, now the husband is there, he is working like a donkey because he needs to pay the school fees. Mm. Now the wife can't even concentrate because under the student rule, they can only work 20 hours. hours yes. That is not sufficient even to pay your rent. Mm. Now, we don't have this problem. Now, the student route cannot be used as a route to relocate your family. It is an abyss of the system. That is mm. what they are saying. Though I know that international law, nations are under obligation to promote family life. Yes. And this dependency, something, dependent route, how it came about because they said, look, you are going to UK. You've been living with your family and the children, and you are going to UK to study for one year. Within that one year, is it appropriate for the children not to have opportunity to see you? That's why Parliament now said you can bring your dependents in. When you finish your education, you can go back to the country. Maybe if you don't, there are other routes which you can apply. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have, and this is why this policy has come up, is because at the end of the day, the immigrations have now realized that a lot of, majority of them are now using fake bank accounts mm. in order to get a visa. Fake bank statements. Now, and it's a lot. And mm. I'll tell you, look, if you look at this letter, this is a letter from the immigration. Mm. Now, this person has already entered the UK already mm. as a student. Right. If, if just read the first paragraph for the benefit of your viewers. Okay, so the heading here is your permission to enter may be cancelled. You were granted permission to enter the United Kingdom as a student, as the emphasis, until 30th of November 2022. I have been made aware that your provide, you provided false documentation as bank statement and it mentioned the, the, name, bank, of the, the bank. name of the bank. Therefore, yeah. I am considering whether it is appropriate to cancel your entry permission. You see, that is somebody who has already obtained a visa, use a bank statement, which turned out to be fake after entering the UK. And that sort of letter, that is from the immigration, mm. that sort of letter is what you call fairness letter, that look, we want to cancel your mm. stay and send you back to mm. Nigeria. But we are giving you an 21 opportunity, days. 21 days, mm. to explain yourself. But Mr. Now, I know, let yes, me just quickly please. ask on this point. Yeah, I, I know there is so much more coming mm. from you in this regard. What's the implication of this, um, this will I say the utilization? Because somebody comes in with fake bank uh, details and all that. W what really is the implication of that on the economy, you know, that is making the government to be uh, this adverse now? You, you mean the economy in United Kingdom? Right, yes. Well, the, the, the implication of the economy is that you have students entering the country and they cannot even maintain themselves. Mm. Now, what happened in the end? Well, you know, United Kingdom is a welfare country. If a woman entered the country with three children and it cannot even maintain herself, not to talk of maintaining the children, the implication of the economy in the long run is that the state has to take over because under the children act, children must not be left to be destitute and look after those children by providing them with some form of state benefit and what have you, yeah. and incentives. And you now have this sort of problem. It's not limited to that. That is one. There is another one here for mm -hmm. another person another that discovery. Who, use, uh, who use another bank statement, another fake bank statement. Read it. Because now this is the trend. Mm. And it is very disturbing. 
There is even a particular airport in United Kingdom. If you arrive there this morning as a student, they will subject you to serious scrutiny because they know that majority of them are using fake bank statements. And mm. that is making things difficult. And it begs the question whether even... Just read and, and see what is written. This, uh, you, you were granted permission to enter the United Kingdom as a student until 13th May 2023. Mm. I have been made aware that a false, I mentioned the bank statement, was provided in support of your application. Therefore, I am considering whether it is appropriate to cancel your, your permission. You see? Yeah. That, that is the problem. Mm. And that is why this is getting to the ministers that, look, majority of these people coming in as a student, they don't have sufficient fund either to pay their school fees and look after themselves. And there is another problem. If you use that fake bank statement, mm. you get the visa to come in. Most of the institutions of learning, they are under obligation to make sure that the students they are bringing to the United Kingdom have sufficient fund mm. for their education because it's a condition of their sponsor license. Yeah. Now, that is where the deception comes in. If you now, the money you don't have, you, you prove that you have, you have it, it and they give you that admission. It is even possible for the institution to turn around and say, if not because you deceive us, we wouldn't have given you admission, admission. in wow. the first instance. Right. So your deposit will go. And even if you have that certificate, they can revoke it because they, will, they are going to turn around. Because you see, most of the institution in the United Kingdom, they make money, a lot of money from overseas students. Yes. That, and it is a condition of their license that, look, you must make sure these people attend class. You must also make sure they have enough money mm. to look after themselves. But we have this ugly situation where people are now using this fake bank statement day in, day out to get a visa and move the whole family. There is one which is even worse. She came to the country. This is even ridiculous. She came to the country with her husband and six children. Now, can you imagine if an immigration, you sit down at the desk as an immigration officer, you see a Nigerian woman coming with a husband and six, six children. children. Now, something will tell you that, look, what is going on? You know, everybody has their own prejudice. Let mm. us be realistic. And now, when they now interview her, if you see some of the answers to the question, you wonder whether this person has even been to school. Because one of the questions that you said you went to Ogun State University, you had a degree, and the officer is asking you, where is that Ogun State University? You said it's in Altarawa State. Mm. Now, that wow. is very disturbing. What are the components that you study as an undergraduate student? The answer was just all over the place. Mm. Now, this will even make you laugh. Thank God because they didn't detain her because you know to have a detention facility for six children is not an easy thing so they said go come back in the next four days so that we send you back to nigeria yeah. well lo and behold i intervened and there was an issue that irrespective of anything forget all her answer if she traveled with six children from nigeria to Qatar and they stay in doha for uh, so many hours before boarding another flight to London. It is, that is very stressful. Mm. And having said that, it is possible if you ask her where is Ogun State University, you will get a wrong answer because of the pressure of the flight. You see, so because of that abuse, mm. that's why the government has to stop it, to come in and say, look, we need to do something about this. We can't let it continue. Oh, but quickly, because we have uh, yeah, about three it. minutes to round up, isn't this uh, an indictment on... Uh, Nigeria as a country not doing what is necessary because if we had uh, everything in place, the majority of the persons who are taking advantage of this route wouldn't be doing that. Well, I agree, but it's not limited to Nigeria alone. Nations to have a responsibility, right? Part of it because if you don't create a legal route for people to migrate, a legal route to will surface. Mm. And also, where it is an indictment on the nation is that if you don't give your citizen an opportunity, they will look for opportunity elsewhere. Yeah. But it is very important for people who are migrating to know that what you do in Nigeria and you get away with it, you can't do it when you get there mm. and get away with it. And you may end up in prison. Because you, you see, there are certain things. Take for instance, in Nigeria, um, sorry, in United Kingdom, 
Adultery is not a it's not a criminal offense. Really? It just, it just, yes, it's just a ground for divorce mm. if you want to divorce. But under the penal code in Nigeria, I think adultery is a criminal mm. offense. In Saudi Arabia, adultery is a criminal offense. Now, voyeurism, whereby you know you go into a male toilet and you want to pee, and the other man is looking at the other man's mm. thing. Now, that is voyeurism. It's a criminal offense in United Kingdom. Here, it may be fun. A theft mm -hmm. by finding. If you see somebody wallet outside and you pick it up and take it home, it's a criminal offense in the United Kingdom. In Nigeria, it mm -hmm. might be your mother's your lock. lock. Your <laughs> lock. <laughs> <But it's, laughs> do, do you get this thing? So, you see, people need to do a research. There are certain countries. And also, this idea, if you want to be a global citizen, I've said this before. The best passport you can have is that of United Arab Emirates because that will allow you to enter 188 countries mm -hmm. visa-free. The worst passport is that of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And even the Nigerian passport can allow you to enter about in, 54 in countries. Region. But some of them are Burundi, Uganda, mm -hmm. all these places. <laughs> you see, this, so, these are, so people need to look at this thing. And also, before you bought the flight, Try to do some research. Yeah. There are some look, if you get to Italy or South Africa and you bring out your passport and there's a multiple stamp in that passport, mm. if they, they will not allow you in because it is the condition in their immigration country that you must have two blank pages in your passport mm. before you come in. Mm. There are other countries when you get there, if, you have, if your passport is due to expire in six months, they will not allow, allow you in. in yeah. You see, these are, these are basic things we need to. And there are other legal routes people can use to migrate. Because can you imagine, you sell all your assets, you get to United Kingdom, and somebody is writing you these type of letters that we are thinking of canceling you. It's not fear on the children, too, mm. because you've uprooted them from here. They are now settling down in another country. No, we managed to get these two out of it because they have children. And the argument is that under Section 55 of the Borders Act, you know, immigration officer must take uh, welfare of the children into account in their So that was their saving grace. And that was the saving grace. Right. You understand? But people should do things normally and follow the right route. That's well, what I think. We'll have to leave the conversation there now, but we must thank you. Uh, UK-based solicitor and immigration lawyer, Olifemi Aina, an interesting conversation we have had. Absolutely. Because uh, what it's happens after time, the though. one year of your time <laughs> it is also another conversation yes, altogether. Yes, yes, uh, it, it, we just have to leave it here now. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming on the show. All right.